I apologize that I'm a little late to the party on this one. As of last week, there's been a certain amount of controversy regarding Toucan Sam, something I never thought I'd say. So I think this would be a good time to do a retrospective on his career as the Fruit Loops mascot. Fruit Loops have been around since 1963, and yes, it's spelled F-R-O-O-T, since they legally can't use the real spelling. There's no actual fruit in the cereal. Since day one, Toucan Sam has been the mascot, and also since day one, there has been a heavy emphasis on the cereal's fragrant scent. In the earliest commercials, Toucan Sam was voiced by Mel Blanc, and he had a somewhat grumpy personality. He was accompanied by his two nephews, who wore baby bonnets that I guess signified their youth. The first jingle featured Pig Latin, and was about the joys of Utfre Oopsle and how they else made Elicious Day. I'm really glad they stopped using that Pig Latin angle because it very quickly got on my Irv's nay. The first two decades of Toucan Sam's career are somewhat hazy, as I get almost all the commercials from YouTube, and there are only a small handful of commercials from the 60s and 70s. As early as 1970, we know that Toucan Sam was being voiced by Paul Fries, who gave him a British accent, and we know that they were using the Follow Your Nose tagline about how Toucan Sam was able to sniff out Fruit Loops anywhere. At some point during the 70s, a formula for the commercials was firmly established. Toucan Sam would encounter an eccentric animal who was in need of food. He would lead the animal to Fruit Loops by following his nose, it always knows, to the flavor of fruit wherever it grows. This formula was kept up for nearly 20 years until about 1995. The animals all had their own unique little quirks, and had a decent amount of personality for one-shot characters that were only on screen for about 30 seconds. Some of my favorites include a rapping rhino, simply for the sheer 90s hipness of it all, a fruit bat with hypnotic powers, and a trio of valley girl ostrich skaters who seem to have a crush on Toucan Sam. You know what they say about a guy with a big nose. One gimmick that they had for a while in these commercials was Sam whipping out a fake nose and plopping it on the animal's face to help them smell their way to breakfast with them. I don't know if these actually function for the animals, but hey, it's a free meal, so just do what the bird says. Speaking of noses, I wanted to make a joke about how birds don't really have noses, they have beaks, but they do have nostrils, so does that count as a nose anyway? And after about two minutes of googling, I got bored and figured, nose or not, real birds don't talk or have opposable thumb wings, so I dropped the idea pretty quickly. One thing I do wonder from these commercials is, whose cereal is it that the animals keep stumbling upon? As I said, an animal is hungry, so Toucan Sam follows his nose to a bowl of Fruit Loops, often accompanied by the rest of a balanced breakfast, just sitting out in the open. Is there some other animal who's being robbed of breakfast? Or has Sam just gotten so used to meeting quirky animals who are in need of cereal that he's just systematically placed Fruit Loops boxes all around the jungle? And in that case, What's to stop someone else from just taking the box? Obviously, this isn't something that would occur to kids watching these commercials, and it honestly didn't occur to me until I watched literally about a hundred of these things in a row. Such is the risk of making videos like this, I suppose. After the passing of Paul Fries, Maurice LaMarche took over voicing Toucan Sam in 1986. In 1987, the two nephews from the earliest commercials returned, except there were three of them now. They also receive names which are, I kid you not, Pewee, Susie, and Louie. I wanted so badly to make a Donald Duck reference before I learned this, but since they actually named one of the nephews Louie, it's like they were preemptively deterring those kinds of jokes by essentially making one themselves. Sometimes there's a thin line between an homage and a ripoff, and I still can't quite figure out what category these little guys fall under. They are voiced by Frank Welker and Jim Cummings. As Toucan Sam entered the 90s, several new colors were added to the cereal. The original three colors were yellow, red, and orange. Green was introduced in 1991, purple in 1994, and blue in 1996. The commercial promoting the blue color was a fun one, where the blue Fruit Loops erupt from a volcano. The group of celebrating animals below is actually made up of some of the hungry animals from previous commercials, which was a nice little throwback. One brief campaign that seemed to target older kids was introduced in the early 90s, where the slogan was, The Fruit Taste You Dream About. I found three commercials from around 1992 and 1993 where teens have surreal dreams about their love of Fruit Loops, including a drive-by Fruit Looping, 
a giant toucan Sam emerging from under a kid's bed and flooding the room with cereal, and my favorite of the three, a parody of Alien with a face-hugging toucan bursting out of a fruit cocoon. Starting in the late 90s, the commercials took on a more adventurous theme. Toucan Sam and his nephews would be on the search for new flavors and varieties of their favorite cereal, and their discoveries would be released as limited-time editions in the real world. For instance, around the new millennium, Sam stumbled upon a large magical clock that unleashed Marshmallow 2s into the cereal to celebrate the year 2000. Sometimes the adventures came to the toucans, and the storyline would be broken into two to four parts. In 2002, they battled the evil Dr. Peacock, who tried to steal the world's colors with his color ray. In 2004, a huge green alien landed in search of Fruit Loops. The Toucan's biggest adventure came in 2005, when the nephews found a treasure map written by the apparently legendary pirate Blackbeak. Their ensuing treasure hunt lasted for four years, with about 14 commercials airing between 2005 and 2009. Along the way, Toucan Sam and the boys found different kinds of Fruit Loops, including golden-colored pieces, and other gimmicks that could be found for a limited time. As their adventures continued, they learned a bit more about who Blackbeak was. Apparently, while he was a master collector of cereal artifacts with his trio of smaller toucans who looked like the nephews, he selfishly hoarded them, unlike the generous Toucan Sam, who shared his cereal with everyone. In the grand finale, the toucans found the last of the treasure that was still guarded by Blackbeak and his henchmen, who I guess are ghosts now? The nephew suddenly used the Fruit Loops as lightsaber-like weapons, instantly defeat the pirates, and they all share some cereal. The whole thing took less than 30 seconds to wrap up, and it was a little underwhelming. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a cereal commercial. It's not supposed to be some big thing. And yes, I know that. But put yourselves in the mind of the target audience. Pretend you're a kid who saw the toucan set off on this adventure four years ago, and you've been following their journey. You found yourself actually invested in their findings, and then... The grand climax comes, and Blackbeak goes down with barely a fight. You blink, and it's over. This is the same franchise that broke a battle with a random alien into four separate commercials. If I had been a youngster watching this, I'd be pretty annoyed. After their treasure arc, the two cans continue to adventure through the 2010s, finding new foes to battle. And now that we've reached 2020, I guess I'll have to address the elephant in the room. The main reason I made this video. Toucan Sam's Redesign So far, there has only been one 15-second commercial featuring new Sam to my knowledge, but it caused a surprisingly large backlash. The commercial is pretty typical of a serial ad. Toucan Sam, with a higher-pitched voice, takes a couple kids on a journey through a magical serial land. It was how Sam looks here that is the source of the uproar. Remember in that Trix video I did where I talked about the B-Team commercials that felt like a soulless ripoff of The Amazing World of Gumball? Well, that's the vibe that we're getting from this commercial here. When I was a kid, I had a few of those bootleg Looney Tunes tapes where they just spliced some public domain cartoons together. The cover art was clearly unofficial knockoff artwork, and I feel that this version of Toucan Sam would fit in with those characters. At the same time, although the art isn't great, I don't think it's the worst thing ever either. The only part I really dislike is the mouth-beak thing he has going on. That's distracting and unappealing. But the rest of him is just kinda bland, not terrible. The backlash is interesting because I feel like this is the most attention Toucan Sam has ever received. Aside from being changed a bit since his initial 60s design, the artwork for Sam has been consistent since the 70s. He's been a constant for most of us, seeing him in the cereal aisle since we were kids and looking the same. Sure, it's not the first time a character has been radically changed, but I guess it's jarring on an almost subconscious level since we've grown up with the same guy and now he's… not. Although there was definitely a large outcry at the new design, I get the feeling that it will die down soon. Heck, my video might already be too late at this point. I suppose it could potentially lead to the old design returning, or a different new design being tested out, and at this point only time will tell. Rather than end the video on a kind of negative note of speculation for the future of Toucan Sam, I'd like to say some positive things about the character. One thing I realized while gathering Fruit Loops clips is that Kellogg seems to have the nicest batch of characters out of all the other big serial companies. There's a feeling of chaos and 
meanness to some of the other commercials out there. The Trix Rabbit and Lucky the Leprechaun are tormented by kids. Count Chocula and Frankenberry are always squabbling. Barney Rubble will never let Fred Flintstone enjoy his pebble cereal. And the mascot for Cookie Crisp was literally a burglar at one point. Meanwhile, most of the Kellogg's characters are friendly and helpful. That's not to say I don't like the other commercials I mentioned, they're a lot of fun. It's just nice to have Tony the Tiger and Toucan Sam to balance things out. Toucan Sam is all about being kind to others. He regularly gives his cereal to complete strangers. Even in commercials where he matches wits with rivals or enemies, they usually shake hands and share a bowl of cereal at the end as buddies. It's all really wholesome. So, whatever happens with Toucan Sam in the future, whether people warm up to the redesign or not, I just hope that the people creating the commercials never lose sight of the important part of this toucan. He follows his nose not only to find cereal, but also friends.